Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to talk about rondos in the youngest age groups. So let's go. So guys, I had a request from one of my subscribers to break down some of the individual things that I like to do in my Run Better Sessions video. So let's jump right into rondos. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a rondo? Simply put, a rondo is when you have one group of players with a numerical superiority over a group of players that is at a numerical disadvantage. The team that has the numerical superiority is trying to keep the ball. Really, they wanna keep possession. The team that is at the disadvantage or the team that has less players or sometimes just one player is simply trying to win the ball back. Basically, that's what it is. Now, why rondos? I have to start by showing this quote that if you do any type of searching about rondos, you will see a quote by Johann Cruyff, who is considered the grand master of rondos, the, the godfather of rondos. You can see that he's talking here about what the rondo will do for your player. So it does everything except for shooting. You get technical. There's the ability to compete. There's spacing involved how to play quote unquote one touch soccer, how to win the ball back, how to mark somebody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all great and good, but we're coaching eight year olds here. I'm talking about seven, eight, nine year old kids. How do I take an exercise like a rondo, start it at the very young ages and build it into what we're talking about? So in order to walk, we've got to crawl first. And the number one thing is to start very, very simple and stay simple for a long period of time. You're gonna to have to be very persistent and very patient with this age group. Understanding that's gonna take a lot longer than you might think for the concepts to sink in. At the very start, you're going to be doing four against zero or four against the coach. Here you can see I have set up a four against zero with two mannequins strategically placed. The rondo is initially set up putting cones into a square. Now, the size of your grid will depend quite a bit on the level of player and their abilities. In general, the younger and more inexperienced the player is, as well as the less technical they are, the larger grid they're gonna need to perform these rondos. So how do you turn these into games? Because we know kids at this age, they wanna play in a game-like situation and they want it to be fun. The way we do this is just start out very simply. If they can connect four passes, it's considered a point or a goal. If the coach takes it, if it's four against the coach, then it's considered a goal for the coach. Now, if you're playing four against zero, if they uh, lose the ball, if the ball goes out of the area and they're not able to control it, you can consider that to be a point. And then we play to five. So we've set it up and let's now talk about how we introduce our coaching points at this age. Here we are with our 4v0 with the two mannequins set up. Now these could easily have been cones, but the two main concepts that I begin to introduce are first, the player with the ball. Do they have their head up? Are they scanning? Where is the pressure? And secondly, players off the ball, how can we support the player with the ball with the best angle? So here we have four against the coach where the coach is providing a measured amount of pressure. The pressure should be enough to challenge them, but not too much to where they fail over and over again. You want them to feel some degree of success stringing passes together. Again, when you begin training with these 4v0, 4v the coach rondos, the only two coaching points I'm really trying to get across are scanning, where's the pressure, and off the ball, how do we support? So this is an example of us doing rondos uh, as part of our pregame. And you can see at the very top, it is a four versus the coach. The bottom is a four versus one with some pressure. But I want you to focus up top as I'm changing where the pressure is coming from. It's either coming from their left or from their right. And they actually have to get their head up, look for that pressure. Which way am I coming? And then look for where the support angles are. The players off the ball are supposed to go up and down their line, trying to support the player with the ball, with the best angle. So guys, I really wanna reinforce the fact that this is gonna take a long period of time. Your players are gonna need time and repetition to do this. So you're gonna to have to do it every single practice. I do it 15, maybe 20 minutes of every single session. And I started 
uh, my current team who are U9, we started last year at U8. We did it every single practice and it was four V zero, uh, four against the coach with measured pressure for months before I added that actual defender where they went full tilt defending. Even before you add that defender in there, when you're going 4v coach, once they've understood scanning, where's the pressure and supporting the person with the ball, taking the right angles, moving up and down that line, the next step is to introduce how to receive the ball. Let's take a look in 3D to better visualize this. To receive the ball, we need to receive it across our body. So you can see the player here on the left with the ball. He will see the coach coming at him. The player to the top of the rondo is going to come over and support. When he does this, he should receive the ball with his left foot. The reasons to do this are he's opening his body up and he's able to see the whole field. If he receives the ball with his right foot, he's only facing the player who passed him the ball and now has to turn with extra touches in order to open up to the field. This is another 4v the coach and we're going to focus on this player right here. You can see here as the ball is coming from the player's left, he makes a special effort to receive it with his right foot. This gives him an open body shape to where he can play the ball either to his right or if he had to, go back to where the pass came from. Here we are, same player, ball coming from his right now, makes a special effort to receive the ball across his body with his left foot, which again gives him an open body shape. Once your players get more comfortable with the 4v0 or the 4v coach, we move on to add pressure with the classic 4v1 rondo. Setup is as described before. However, this time the coach stands with balls just off to the side, ready to play a ball in as soon as the ball is either taken by the defender or goes out. Switch the defender every 30 seconds to a minute. What you're looking for is high intensity from the person giving the pressure and they will get tired very quickly. The same scoring system applies. Four passes equals a point, and if the defender wins the ball, they get a point. The next progression is to add goals. So the defender, if they win the ball, can go to goal in order to score a point, whereas the team in possession still has to complete four passes to score a point. The next progression is to go to a 4v2 rondo with two players in the middle. This adds an additional element of pressure that the player needs to be aware of. You can also add counter goals, just like we did with the 4v1, so the defenders, if they win the ball, can go to goal. Just be careful of progressing to a 4v2 too early. Your team may not be ready. Coaching points are the same, guys. 4v2 or 4v1. Scanning. Are they getting their head up looking for pressure? Support, are the people off the ball giving the right angles to the ball carrier? Are we receiving across our body? Also, are we communicating? Are we talking to each other? After 4v1 and 4v2, there are other variations you can try. This here is a combination of, you can see two rondos together. So instead of two 4v1 rondos, we have, this is basically seven versus two where the two attackers can go to the goals. As your players get older and they transition out of the 7v7 game, you can really start doing quite a lot of variations with the rondos. This is a U11 team doing a 4v2 plus one transitional rondo. There's multiple variations, but at the youngest age groups, guys, we wanna keep it as simple as possible. One last point of clarification, guys. Rondos are different than the team organizational activities. So. When I say a team organizational activity, I'm talking about our shape. So I will play seven versus one, seven versus two, seven versus three in our shape in a smaller grid. And it is a possession based drill, but I don't consider that to be a rondo. Those I do very early on. As the kids get older, the rondos become more complex. They become positional. So you can do a rondo really focusing on, let's say building out of the back, for example. But I don't typically start doing that till we get into U11, U12. At the youngest age groups, guys, just keep it simple. Focus on those coaching points I talked about. Stay with 4v1, 4v2, maybe add goals. You could expand it to that 7v2 activity, but when it comes to rondos, really focusing on the basics, the 4v1 is the way to go. I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please comment below.